Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen wa salatu wa salamu ala nabihi wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in As-salamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh Today I want to mention an incident that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala preserves for us in the Quran And it's an incident that involves one of the greatest people that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ever sent on this earth And this incident also involves what the scholars mention is the worst person, the most evil person that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also placed on this earth so this incident, it takes place between Musa السلام, and Fir'aun. Now what happens is that Musa السلام, he goes to the palace of Fir'aun. The palace of Fir'aun. And Fir'aun, he says, show me a sign if you are really a prophet. So Musa السلام, as we know, he threw his staff down, it turned into a snake. He pulled up his hand, which was bright, shining bright. <coughs> now what did Fir'aun say? What did Fir'aun say? He said that this is magic. He said, he's effectively saying that, saying that you are a liar. And then he tries to, and the people around him, they try to even go one step further, calling a prophet of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala a liar, provoking him if you like. Now, in this conversation, this very short snippet, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us two lessons. One from Fir'aun and one from Musa alayhi salam. From Fir'aun himself, what was he doing to Musa alayhi salam? What were the people around Fir'aun doing? They were trying to provoke Musa alayhi salam. And you know, sometimes when you have maybe you're in an argument with somebody, or somebody's really trying to deliberately provoke you, trying to push your buttons, for example, this is exactly what Fir'aun was doing. Now, Musa alayhi salam on the other side, he was sent to Fir'aun. Now, Fir'aun was not any person. Why is it that I mentioned the scholars say he's the most evil person to be set foot on this earth? Fir'aun is somebody who ordered the slaughter of newborn baby boys. What does this mean? This means that mothers that were carrying their babies in their stomachs, or inside their abdomen, for nine months, 270 days and nights, as soon as they delivered, if it was a boy, it will be slaughtered. Fir'aun is somebody, who Allah mentions in Surah Tahrim, he tortured his own wife to the extent that the angels came and they provided shape for Asya. This is Fir'aun. Now when Musa was sent to him, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said to him, فَقُولَ لَهُ قَوْلًا لَيِّنَا When you go to this person who is the worst tyrant ever, speak to him gently. Speak to him gently. Now imagine this. Isn't this a lesson for us? If this is speaking to Fir'aun, then how about when we speak to others? When we speak to our parents? When we speak to our families? Our friends? Our community? How should we speak to them? And the way we say things, and the things that we say, it's often easy to underestimate the importance of them. And I'll give you a very quick example. Six days ago, the England cricket team won the World Cup for the first time in their history, in England as well. At the end of the game, there was an interview, which many of you may have seen, with the captain of the cricket team. And they said to him, during the game, it was a tight game, did you think that you had a bit of luck? Did you think you had a bit of luck in winning the game? He said that during the game, one of the Muslim players, and remember there were two Muslim players on that team. He said, during the game, one of the Muslim players, he said to me that, don't worry, Allah is with us. Now just imagine this, a non-Muslim person, the captain of the England cricket team, for the first time in their history, on international news, on TV, on social media, he's saying that a Muslim player told him, don't worry, Allah is with us. He's talking about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He's talking about placing your trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He's talking about tawakkul in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Maybe he doesn't know it himself, the details, but well, where did this come from? This came from four words that that Muslim player told him. Allah is with us. So never underestimate the words that you say to others, whether they be Muslims, whether they be not Muslims. In fact, in another example, at the end of the game, many of you may have seen they were receiving their medals, and there was a picture that was going to be taken, a team photograph. At the end of the photograph, they brought out alcohol, and they were spraying the alcohol everywhere, and some were drinking it, and so on. The two Muslim players that were at the side, they moved to the side to avoid that situation. Now here's a lesson for us as well. That we as Muslims, 
We should always be people of principle. We should always be people of principle. And we learn from this that as Muslims we can be part of a successful team, be part of society, be part of shaping the fabric and the DNA of our community without compromising on our principles. And this was an important lesson that we learned only six days ago. Now, coming back to the story of Musa and Fir'aun, what happens? Fir'aun says, okay, let's set a day, Musa, you come and I'm going to bring my magicians. Because I think that you have magic. I think what you're doing is magic. So he sets a day. And now Fir'aun at this time, what does he do? He's going and he's looking for magicians. So he sets up callers. And I'm thought to be mentions that they looked for 70,000. 70,000 magicians were called up. Out of 70,000 magicians that were in Egypt at that time, only 70 were chosen. As a percentage, that's 1%. That means that the top 1% were chosen. Now, even here nowadays, for example, if you go to one of the top universities, you go to, for example, Oxford or Cambridge, even according to their own statistics last year, they accept approximately 15 to 17% of the applicants. 15 to 17%. Here, Fir'aun said, I don't even want the top 1%. These magicians came now. Then what happened? They came with ropes and sticks that were carried on camels. There were so many ropes and sticks that in fact it says in the Tafsir it mentions it required 300 camels to carry these ropes and sticks. And now they come to the palace of Fir'aun. So Musa alayhi salam is there now. What happens at this point now? What happens there? The magicians, as we're going to very briefly mention, when they see what happens to Fir'aun, when they see what happens to the staff of Musa and their staffs, what do they say? They say that we believe in Allah. And not only this, not only do they say that we believe in Allah, but what happened to them was at the beginning of the day they were magicians. In the middle of the day, they were believing in Allah. They believed when they saw Musa and the staffs, so and what happened? At the end of the day, they were shuhada, all in the same day. Now this is a lesson for us, the second lesson today, which is that we should always hope to have good in our lives in this, this life and in the akhirah. In this life and in the akhirah. Really want to get to Jannah. Really ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to get to Jannah. Allah wants us to be in Jannah. He says in the Quran, Wallahu yadu'u ila daris salam. Allah says that He's calling us to Dar al-Salam, to Jannah. So when we make our dua, it's important, of course, we ask for forgiveness for our sins. Yes, very important. But also remember to ask Allah for your place in Jannah. And this is what the Prophet used to do. He used to make dua and used to say to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that, I ask you for good deeds. And, and uh, many other duas used to say, um, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, I ask you for Jannah to Firdaus wa maqarraba ilayha min qawli mu'amin. So the second lesson we learn is the importance when we make dua, yes, ask Allah for forgiveness, but keep making dua to Allah that He enters you and enters all of us into a place in Jannah. <laughs> so the first two lessons we learned today were the importance of thinking and remembering of the things that we say when we speak to others and we speak to those that are Muslim and non-Muslim. The second lesson was the importance of when we make dua to always ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, always ask Allah for your place in Jannah. Now, when the magicians, they came to Musa alayhi salam, as we know, they said to Musa alayhi salam, قَالُوا يَا مُوسَىٰ أَوْ مُوسَىٰ they said, you go first, or we should go first. They said, you want to throw your stars first, or should we throw our stars first? Many of the scholars said that this adab, that this just asking somebody else, was the reason for their accepting that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is their Lord. And then when we fast forward a little bit, Musa alayhi salam, when he threw his staff down, even at first, mentions that his staff turned into a huge snake. Some narration that he mentioned said that it was 80 arm spans in height, the height of a castle. Now when that snake came and it ate up all of the other ropes and sticks that the magicians had brought, the magicians, they fell down to prostrate to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
They fell down. They prostrated to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What did Fir'aun say? Was he going to take this? No. Fir'aun said that, Amantu, that you believe in Musa and Harun? I haven't even given you permission. What did the magicians say? They say, we are going back to our Lord. Fir'aun, he is so angry at that state that he comes up with a punishment, as Ibn Abbas mentions, that nobody has ever seen on the face of the earth at that time. He said to these magicians, I'm going to cut off one of your legs and cut off your opposite side of your arms. Then I'm going to crucify you on the shores of the Red Sea. The magicians, what do they do now? They say, Rabbana, they call out to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to fill their hearts with patience. And here's the third and final lesson that we learned today. They were in a state of difficulty. In a state of hardship. They're about to be crucified. What do they do? They turn back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now for us in our lives, we may not go through that same difficulty, but we all go through difficulties. There's nobody that can say that they live their life without any difficulty, whether that be at your work, whether that be with your family, whether that be with your friends, wherever that may be in your life, with your parents, with your children, with in-laws. What do we do when we go through a difficulty? In fact, one of the most common questions that we get, one of the most questions that I, that I have, for example, on Islam channel, when they phone and ask a question, one of the most common ones is, something bad's happened to me in my life. Does this mean that Allah doesn't like me? Does it mean that this is a punishment from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? And the answer is no. It doesn't necessarily mean that Allah is punishing you when something bad happens or difficult happens in your life. The Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said that the most tested of people, the people that went through the hardest difficulties were the Prophets. The Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, said in the hadith text by that even that you go through a difficulty, if a thorn is to prick you, you're walking down the road, the thorn just pricks you on your leg, on your hand, you didn't even know, that even that is an expiation for your sins. But the key point for us is when we go through that difficulty in our lives, whatever it may be, in our health, in our wealth, whatever it may be, that we act just like how the magicians, the lesson we have from the magicians, they turn back to Allah and they raise their hands. They raise their hands and they make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. These magicians, what happened? How many good deeds did they do in their entire life? They spent their entire life practicing magic. What good deeds did they do? One says that. One sajda in their entire life. And what they end up, they end up with shuhada. Now for us, no matter what we have done in our lives, no matter how many sins we have committed, no matter how many deeds we may have missed, Allah tells us in the hadith of Imam Timbali that if your sins were to even reach the size of the skies, the limits of the clouds, if you were to write them down in scrolls and the paper was to feel all the way up to the clouds, then you turn back to me and ask me for forgiveness. Allah says he will forgive you. Allah will the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But the lesson for us is that we have to turn back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and ask him for forgiveness. So the three lessons we learned today, very briefly. The first one, the importance of thinking about what we say and the way we say things, just as Musa was told to speak gently to Fir'aun. The second lesson, the importance of or when you make du'a, always hope, always have that place in the back of your mind, making du'a for your place in Jannah. And the third lesson we learn is, whenever we are in difficulty, just as the magicians were in that time, turn back to Allah. Remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa said that, تَعَرَّفِ اللَّهِ فِي الْرَقَاءِ Remember Allah when you are in ease, when you're not in hardship. And when you are in difficulty, Allah will remember you. وقنا عذاب النار اللهم اغفر لنا ذنوبنا واسرافنا في امرنا وثبت اقدامنا وانصرنا على القوم الكافرين اللهم انا نسالك الجنة الفردوس ومن قرب اليها من قول وعمل ونعوذ بك من النار ومن قرب اليها من قول وعمل ربنا لا تزغ قلوبنا بعد اذ هديتنا وهب لنا من لدنك رحمه انك انت الوهاب وصلى الله على نبينا محمد وعلى اله وصحبه اجمعين كن وناسا وجهك